So there's an interesting idea that historians and sociologists have discussed and explored and researched related to 19th century femininity. And it's called the cult of domesticity, although it was originally referred to by sort of the founder of this interpretive approach. It was originally referred to as uh, the cult of true womanhood. So let's take a look at a quote from Barbara Welter, who actually is the historian who first sort of identified and wrote about this pattern in 19th century culture. And you can read that quote while I'm talking. For me, it has two interesting components. The first is that there were these four virtues that idealized middle-class women of the 19th century were supposed to embody. And then the way those virtues via domesticity were linked to what contemporary sociologists call relational identity, a self defined by its relationship to others rather than by some independent sense of purpose, longing, happiness, etc. So we're going to look at both of those ideas in a little more detail. First of all, the four cardinal virtues. Uh, piety refers to religion. And uh, women were expected to be the voices of religion and the leaders in the family about religion and, and faith belief. Um, and this you can see in a lot of the representations of women that we're going to be looking at in the next few weeks. Uh, purity. This refers to sort of sexual purity, of course, but also sort of mural, moral purity. Um and this idea of having a level of virtue higher than that of men. Submissiveness. Women were supposed to subordinate themselves to the wills and desires of men. And finally, domesticity. Women were supposed to locate themselves and their purpose in life, their sphere, in the domestic or familial domain. Men were supposed to operate in the public sphere of work and politics and communal leadership. Women were supposed to work in a domestic sphere of family and, to some extent, church. So these four virtues are 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 represented as an ideal that you'll see our texts negotiating, sometimes endorsing, sometimes questioning, often simultaneously doing both. The second part of that quote I wanted to highlight for you was the idea that women were expected to sort of fulfill their selves, understand their selves relationally as wife, mother, sister, daughter, not independent person or soul or spirit or mind seeking fulfillment and actualization, very 20th century concepts, but in relation to their domestic roles, in relation to those virtues, those cardinal virtues. So wife, mother, sister, daughter, not independent person. So as you're thinking about Hawthorne stories and the many writers we're going to look at beyond this, see if you can find female characters that the author is using to explore these ideas of uh, domesticity, true womanhood, and relational identity. See you in Blackboard.